Like its predecessors, Dark Souls 3 can be dense and there isn't much hand-holding. If you've played Demon's Souls, Dark Souls, Dark Souls 2, or even Bloodborne, then you know what I'm talking about. But if Dark Souls 3 is your first taste in the punishing RPG series, there are certain things you should probably know before you begin your grueling adventure. Exploration is the key to success. Sure, it can be frightening, but the rewards almost always outweigh the risks. An alternate path can lead to a shortcut, new weapons, armor, souls, rings, undead bone shards, Estus shards, and the list goes on. Even if you've defeated the boss in an area, it's always worth your time to backtrack and pick up something you may have missed. Dying in Dark Souls is normal, as I'm sure you've heard plenty of times. But if you're hardly doing any damage to enemies in a given area, it's probably time to hightail it out of there. Chances are you've stumbled into an area that you aren't quite ready for yet. Backtrack and see if you missed an alternate route. Believe it or not, reading an item description can be really important in a Souls game. Not only do they provide insight into the world, but they can also lead you in the direction of new quests, valuable items, and secret areas. Item descriptions are especially important when it comes to keys. In most cases, the description will tell you exactly where you should stick that key. Speaking of providing insight into the world, you should also speak to every NPC, multiple times. Keep talking to them until they've started repeating themselves. Similar to item descriptions, NPCs will guide you to secret areas, give you items, and in Dark Souls 3, chatting up certain NPCs can also get you different endings. This one should come as a no-brainer, but if you neglect the blacksmith, you're gonna have a bad time. The blacksmith can expand and reallocate your Estus flask, add status effects to your weapons, and most importantly, reinforce them. As you collect titanite shards or chunks, visit this guy that kinda looks like a jacked Santa Claus in the Firelink Shrine and he'll reinforce your weapons. Typically, he won't charge that many souls either, so it's usually worth your time. If you've been playing a lot of Bloodborne leading up to Dark Souls 3, you will probably be doing a lot of rolling, and if your equip load is high, your roll will be slower and clunkier, and it will take longer for your stamina to recharge. As you equip armor and weapons, be sure to keep an eye on your equip load, which you can find right up here. By now, you've probably noticed all the orange messages scrawled across the ground just from this video alone. If you've played Dark Souls before, you know exactly what they are, but if not, it's worth knowing more about these messages. These notes are usually left by other players, and you should be wary about trusting some of these. Some can be really helpful, while others can lead you to your death. If a message is sitting at the edge of a cliff that says, treasure below, I probably wouldn't recommend walking off to sea. Usually you can gauge how trustworthy one of these messages are by seeing how many appraisals it has. Before you pop one of those hefty boss souls, wait. After you've defeated the first few bosses, visit this decrepit old fart on the throne and chat him up. Basically, you can trade these souls for one of two unique items. Keep in mind that you can only pick one per playthrough for each of the souls you collect. I like to think of co-op as a last resort in Dark Souls. After a few dozen failed attempts, then it might be time to consider phoning in some help. Hosting a co-op game is pretty easy. As long as you're logged into the servers, you might notice some summon signs on the ground. All you have to do is examine it, and voila, someone will come to your aid. If you want to help someone else out, then you're going to need an item called White Sign Soapstone. And it's important to note that you will only matchmake with someone who is around the same level as you, and the bosses tend to get a little bit tougher when you have someone by your side. It's also important to note that both parties need to be embered in order to participate in a co-op game. Hopefully these tips will come in handy if Dark Souls 3 is your first in the series. If you're already a Dark Souls pro, leave some of your tips in the comments below, and for more on Dark Souls, stay tuned to GameSpot.